Hey YouTube, this is Kyle from Mr. K's Math and Science channel. Today's video is on the Class A CDL General Permit for the State of Arizona. I strongly recommend that you download or pick up the CDL manual from ADOT. When I picked up the CDL manual, I studied it for that day and went back the very next day, took my general permit test along with all my endorsement tests and passed that day. The CDL permit test focuses on sections 1 through 3, 5 and 6, and 11 through 13 in the ADOT CDL manual. In section 1, it discusses the CDL test, medical requirements, driver disqualifications, other safety rules, and the international registration program. In short, the CDL test are the pre-trip inspection, your basic yard skills test, and the on-the-road test. There are, of course, some physical requirements that you must meet in order to be a truck driver. You have to be able to see. You have to do certain physical tests. This is all covered in your CDL physical. There's driver disqualifications, alcohol, any type of major crimes, felonies, things of that nature will disqualify you from holding a Class A CDL. There are of course other safety rules that you should be familiar with. These rules are part of general purpose driving and if you already have a license you should be familiar with them. Section 2 of the CDL manual focuses on safe driving. First on the list is vehicle inspection. You can refer to the pre-trip inspection video for more information on things you should look for. You also want to make sure you have control of your vehicle. That includes things like accelerating, steering, stopping, and backing safely. You need to be able to shift gears up and down. You need to be able to match RPMs. You need to understand your truck's transmission. You need to be familiar with going down a hill. You want to start in the gear that you plan on going down the hill in. You should never change gears while going down the hill. You need to be familiar with things called retarders. They help slow down the truck. When driving, it's important that you look far ahead. Typically, 12 to 15 seconds is best, which means that slow speeds, it could be as far as a city block, or at highway speeds, it could be a quarter mile or more. Look for traffic. Look for hazards. Check your mirrors frequently. Use your blinkers to communicate lane changes. When driving and an emergency occurs where you need to stop on the road, make sure you have your safety triangles. These need to be set up at 10 foot, 100 foot, and 200 foot increments behind your truck. In a two-way, undivided highway, you need to have these triangles set up 10 foot and 100 foot behind your truck and one 100 foot in front of your truck. When on a curve or an obstructed hill, you need to give plenty of notice. Set up triangles at 10 feet, maybe 100 to 500 feet prior to the curve. This allows drivers to understand what's coming ahead. Control your speed. Understand what stopping distance is. Stopping distance is an equation. Perception distance plus reaction distance plus braking distance equals your total stopping distance. Perception distance is how far or how long it takes your vehicle to stop in ideal conditions. Reaction distance is how long it'll take you to react. Braking distance is how long or how far it will take your vehicle to stop in ideal conditions. The three of these equal your total stopping distance. At 55 miles an hour, your vehicle will travel a minimum of 419 feet, which is more than a football field. Understand that when you double your speed, your stopping distance is four times as much. When you triple your speed, it's nine times as much. Tractor trailers are designed to stop better when you have a full load. When the vehicle is unloaded, the trailer is lighter. With a lighter trailer, the stopping distance is increased because the traction 
and friction required to stop the trailer decreases. Understand how to match your speed to road surfaces. Drive safely when condition, conditions are slippery. Be aware of speed and curves. Pay attention to distance ahead. Pay attention to the traffic flow. Pay attention to your speed on downgrades or upgrades. Watch out for roadway work zones. Driving a tractor trailer is different than driving a car. You're much bigger. Take up more space. Understand your space. Understand what's around you. Know how much space you need. Stay to the right of your lane. Be aware of windy conditions. Remember your truck is larger. It acts like a wind sail. Pay attention to space overhead. Bridge clearances. Things of that nature. Space below. Think about when you go over railroad tracks. Sometimes these railroad tracks are elevated such that you could bottom out in the middle. Pay attention to your space for turns. Proper way to make a right hand turn is called a button hook. Understand that when you are crossing lanes or coming into traffic your vehicle is much bigger and it takes you longer to accelerate. You need to see hazards. Seeing the hazards helps you prepare. Be aware of move over laws. If vehicles are in distress on the side of the road, it's required by law that you move over. Pay attention to your work zones. Watch out for foreign objects. Make sure you look ahead on off ramps, on ramps. Look out for parked vehicles, pedestrians, bicyclists. Etc. These are all hazards. Be aware of distractions, children's, talker, workers, disabled vehicles, confused drivers. These are all examples of hazards. You should always have a plan while you're driving. Be ready in the event that you need to make a quick movement to escape danger. No talking or texting on your cell phone. Those are distractions. Be aware of aggressive drivers, people that tailgate, cut in and out of traffic. Driving at night is much more dangerous. You can't see as far. Other drivers might be fighting fatigue. You could be fighting fatigue. Be aware of drunk drivers, poor lighting on the road things of that nature, headlights, other lights, turn signals, brake lights, your windshield, cleanliness, mirrors. Driving in adverse conditions like fog or winter or even the heat, these can all have an impact on driving safety. As truckers, you can be in multiple climates throughout a day or a week. Make sure your truck's equipped with chains for snow be ready for extreme heats. There is a rapid change that can happen in temperature and elevations. Be aware of those things. Look out for railroad crossings. Understand your load if you're carrying hazardous materials. You need to know the rules for handling those loads. Don't race trains. Don't shift your truck over train tracks. Be careful driving in the mountains. Make sure you're in the gear that you intend to be in before you incline or decline on a mountain. If driving in those conditions in the mountains, be aware of brake fading. If you ride your brake, your brakes heat up. Your brakes begin to fail. Be aware of your ABS system. Understand how to control skids and recover. No accident procedures, what to do in the event of an accident, who to call, how to report it. Be prepared for fires. Make sure you have safety features, extinguishers rated for any load that you may be carrying. It should go without saying the use of alcohol and drugs while driving a commercial vehicle is not allowed. You need to understand the hazmat rules if you're carrying a hazmat load. You need to make sure you have your hazmat endorsement. 
Section 3 of the CDL manual focuses on transporting cargo safely. First thing you want to do is inspect your cargo. Inspect within 50 miles of beginning a trip. Inspect again after 3 hours or 150 miles. Inspect after breaks. Make sure that your cargo weight is within a legal weight limit. Remember, center of gravity. Some loads have higher center of gravities. Make sure you balance the weight, front to back, side to side. You want to make sure that your cargo is secured using blocking or bracing. Use tie down straps every 10 feet, header boards to keep you safe in the event of an emergency or an accident. Make sure the cargo is covered as needed. Be prepared for spills. Remember, sealed and con containerized loads. You can't inspect inside, but make sure the weight is legal. Special considerations for other cargo might include dry bulk tanks, hanging meat, hanging meat sways, livestock moves, and be aware of oversized loads and the risk that they cause. Section 5 of the CDL manual is all about the air brakes. You need to be familiar with this if you plan to operate a commercial vehicle with air brakes. So the air brake system is made up of the air compressor, the compressor governor, storage tanks, tank drains, alcohol evaporator, maybe. There's safety valves, brake pedals. There's some S-cam drum brakes, wedge brakes, disc brakes. Understanding pressure gauges, pressure warning systems, brake lights, spring brakes, parking brakes, modulating control valves, dual parking control valves, and your analog braking system. These are all components of the air brake system that you need to be understanding of and know how to inspect them. Pre-trip inspection video covers some of that material, but I recommend you look into section 5. The dual air brake system is just a safety feature. You have one system for the rear axle, another system for the front axle. You need to be able to understand and inspect your air brake system. Like I said, refer to that pre-trip video. You need to know how to use air brakes. Air brakes are not like standard disc brakes with power or sorry, with brake fluid that we use in our regular four-wheel vehicles. Know how to use emergency stopping, control braking, stab braking, brake fading, brake failures. Understand your parking brakes. Understand. The CDL manual, section 6, focuses on combination vehicles. Most of this material is covered in other videos and other sections of the manual. It's all a regurgitation or a reiteration of our air brake systems, coupling and uncoupling, if you've looked at that endorsement for triples and doubles, inspecting, and just basic safety rules. Again, you need to understand your brake systems, your airline systems, things of that nature. You need to understand glad hands, your trailer air tanks, shutoff valves, service airlines, emergency airlines, understand your tractor protection valves, things of that nature. But most of that stuff is covered in pre-trip inspection videos and other sections of the CDL manual. You need to be able to couple and uncouple your trailer. You need to understand the compo components of those systems, fifth wheel, kingpin, stuff of that nature. You need to know how to back up, position your truck and trailer such that you can do the coupling and uncoupling. And you just need to be able to inspect those assemblies. Refer to the pre-trip inspection video to get more information on the inspecting of these items. Section 7 through 9 of the CDL manual focuses on endorsements. The doubles, triples endorsement, the tank endorsement, and the hazmat endorsement. Refer to the endorsement videos for content related to those topics in my video library. Sections 11 through 13 of the CDL manual focus on vehicle inspection, basic vehicle control skills test, and the on-road driving section. So the vehicle inspection, I go into detail 
in my 15 minute pre-trip inspection video. Go to my channel and find that video. The basic vehicle control skills test includes straight line backing, offset backing, and parallel parking. The on-road driving section, section 13 of the CDL manual, essentially tells how you'll be scored what they look for in the on-road driving, things of that nature. Sections 11 through 13 aren't really in the scope of your CDL permit. This comes later for part of the driving test, etc. You should become familiar with section 11 and you should refer to that pre-trip uh, video to get more details. Again, this video is not a substitute for reading the CDL manual found on a dot website. You can go to this link to get the PDF or you can stop in to an a dot location and get a physical copy. I strongly encourage you to read each section of the manual. If you have any questions or comments about this video or would like to suggest content for future videos, send me an email at sign51687 at yahoo.com. Thanks for watching, be sure to subscribe, and good luck on your permit test.